My guest today is Jimmy Bogard. Jimmy, how you doing? Fantastic. Great to be here. Great. Welcome back to the show. It's been a few years. That has been a few years, I guess. I think the last time it was in Detroit. Detroit. Southfield, Michigan, right? South. By Detroit. Okay, that's Absolutely. Detroit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me again, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a uh, the chief architect at a consulting company called Headspring out of Austin, Texas. You're, you're also a contributor to open source, right? A uh, pretty prolific contributor, open source. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, tell me some of, about some of your open source projects. Well, the most popular one would be uh, AutoMapper. I've used AutoMapper. Yes, I think uh, many people have. Some of them actually enjoy it, and <laughs> I, I do get my, my share of people that don't like it so much, but uh, that's probably my most popular What one. does AutoMapper do? Um, it's a pretty silly library. I have a complex object, probably like an entity framework entity, okay. that I want to map to, a, some kind of simpler object, DTO, that I'm using for maybe uh, MVC application or for a web API to then present to the web or to send over the wire for JSON. Okay. And so it just maps from one object to the other okay. automatically. That's so the kind uh, of transformation from the auto part. Uh, yeah, one exactly. Object model to another object model. Exactly. Um, and it does it if, it if it's all the same property names. It does it pretty much auto magically. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was part of a, I mean, it all started just, you know, 100 lines of code for a project we were working on where we, we were going to have to write that same stupid code a thousand times. Right. And, like, there's just no way we'd have to, we want to build, maintain, and test that code over and over again. Right. So just build something that kind of does some sensible defaults and then kind of took off from there. Tell, tell me a little about the experience of uh, writing and maintaining an open source project. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, it's pretty old open source project now it's uh, about eight or nine years old do, at this point do you remember point. back the day then you first said you know let's not only let's use this and solve a problem for our company but let's make it available to the world what, that was a that was a question we had to answer because i mean initially like i said it was just a couple hundred lines of code inside a project and we said this seems like it has nothing to do with our client stuff what do we do with this so we had to go through the options you know like should i create a product out of it which would be pretty funny because maybe we'd have like the first microtransaction mapper. Like every single oh. map is fifteen cents or something like that. <laughs> that didn't really that didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, or you could sell a license for twenty five bucks. Or sell like make it. productize it, but yeah. uh, all of those seemed like work. <laughs> what was easy was just taking the code and putting it somewhere else on a on a repository. Okay, was it GitHub at that time? Or was it GitHub did not exist at the time. Oh wow! So this That's is before that. It's GitHub. Uh, so it originally Source was on Forge, uh, maybe or no uh, like Google Code. code. Plex, Google Code. Google okay. Code. Yeah, it it started on Google Code with Subversion, okay. then moved to Codeplex, uh, and then moved to GitHub. Okay. Finally, so it's uh, made a few made a few journeys over the years. And it was um, originally it was just you or just you and a couple of folks on your team, right? That was just work. me for probably just you, just maintaining this thing like five years or so. And what have people would send you requests and say, "Why doesn't it do this?" Pretty much, and you we'd would say, have, "I don't know, let's make it happen." That's pretty much it. Uh, most of the time, it was client projects. It was just oh, I see. We would so you were we'd, this we'd keep you know, going from project to project. Like, oh, it'd be nice if it did this thing. Okay. Um, of course, there were mistakes made over the years. There are some things I put in there that. I regretted, oh, and then share finally got the over. Yeah, so let's let's share some dirty laundry. With <laughs> uh, well, one of the probably the biggest one um, was, and I, I knew it was a bad idea at the time, but I didn't have an alternative for us. Um, it used to have the ability to do f a lot of string formatting, so it take some numerical value and then f also do some formatting. Okay, uh, but it turns out you really want to do that work closer to when you're about to display the value, not when you're kind of mapping the value. Oh, okay. Um, so we were doing crazy things like formatting HTML values in there as well. Like oh, I've the, seen that. I've seen stored procedures, for example, that return HTML. Yeah, image, yeah. And that, that's generally not a good idea. And it felt worse and worse and worse over time. Yeah. So eventually I, <laughs> I worked up enough courage to start to deprecate and obsolete those things uh -huh. and just completely remove them and say, it was well, a bad idea. What was the reaction to that when you actually took away some features? Well, I tried to do it very deliberately uh, and at least provide some other options if you're still using this here's some other things you can do but uh, it was just a really bad idea okay. uh, it was also just killing performance because it would have to run through the string functions every right. single time so just hmm. not not my smartest my right. smartest move um, it, at what point did it become really um, a collaboration between you and the community or, or did it ever did this become are other are there other contributors besides you now after all these years? There is. We I I would say the I'm not even the largest contributor at this point. Um, 
I mean, total commits, yes, but... Tell me about that first non-Jimmy committer. I was super excited about it. Yeah. Um, I didn't really like the implementation of the feature, but I was just so happy to have someone want to contribute back. All right. So I just, just took it pull, in. He did a pull request, and you immediately said, yes. Um, I don't think that we had pull requests back oh, then, okay. even. It was like, uh, there's either CodePlex or whatever the thing you do in Google Code, which is probably a zip file. Okay. So uh, he just sent you the changed code. Like, here's the... Said, what do you think? Yeah, here's my changed code. Did he talk to you about it first, or did he just make the change and send it to you? No, just made the change and sent it to me. And, so and you liked it, so you checked yeah, it like, out. I was like, oh, checked it in. Um, I, I've le- had to learn to be much more selective, not because people send bad code, but I have to make sure I'm maintaining the focus of the library and not just keep adding things in right. this for the sake of adding things. Uh, so I try to make sure that everything that's in there are things that we actually use. Because okay. one of the things I find is I'll have people kind of do a, a, a drive-by pull request, right. and then if sometime in the future there's something wrong with it, they're gone. Right. I am on the hook maintaining sure you it. you understand what I they understand did, it and the motivation it. and the... And the, and the reasoning and the problem it's trying to solve. If I don't buy into the problem and the solution, then I just I'll, I just reject them and say thank you. Uh, the very mu- I very much like to have discussions online before people start to have code. So that's what I really try to do now is open GitHub issues for discussions, and mm. then we kind of arrive at a solution, and then someone submits it. And that's why I'm not the one that's mainly writing submissions or pull requests anymore is because we try to do a lot more upfront and the issues so that anyone oh, could okay. then go in and Are you still the main moderator of those and decision maker? Are I am. Benevolent dictator for life of <laughs> I am, but we we have a, a couple other now that have submitted enough things over the years that I've brought in and said, you know, you can, you can close issues. Oh, was the other thing, by the way, that was important is to have someone that was just ferocious about closing issues yeah. i would keep issues open for months and months and months but because you know if they took time to look at them just be like i want to you know i want to give this person uh the time they deserve because <laughs> they took the time and now i have a contributor that just says this question is better for stack overflow closed uh, which is great because yeah. most of the questions are like that and then you can go to stack overflow and get fake internet points for those answers <laughs> Which you can spend at um, <laughs> Stack Overflow. That's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so, so where does it stand now? Is it uh, this been what you said nine years? Eight yeah, years? eight or nine years. It's is that is it baked? Are you done? Are there actually people still adding features to it? Or? Uh, yeah, there's there's always kind of more scenarios that we were looking at. I mean, one of the the past probably three years has seen the biggest upheaval in the code base. It started with um, supporting a feature that I'm really excited about, which is instead of going from like entity framework DB context, Mm -hmm. going to your entities and then mapping from your entities to the DTOs, what we added was the ability to go from straight from the DB context to your DTOs, skipping the entities altogether. I see that a lot, that the people are flattening that uh, that, that, uh, end to your... Yes, yes. And so what we do is, uh, you can do this with entity framework already. You can use the dot select method for link projection, right. and it will skip your entire entity model and just go straight from kind of the DB context right to your DTO. Yeah. And so we plugged into that same sort of thing, so it, it will effectively do the same thing and be about as quick as you can possibly get for mapping something because it goes straight from SQL to your DTO. Yeah, I, I guess uh, I've written a lot of these these entire architecture where every layer has its own object model, and I was transformed to it. and more than half the time, the 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 schema of these objects are identical mm-hmm. in multiple layers. That I'm just duplicating it, and we're just transferring <laughs> for no really immediate benefit mm-hmm. at all. Um, so I, I, I think it's <laughs> argued that someday I might move this entire layer to another server and scale never, it independently. But that's never, really rare. That's never happened. Uh, and the other really big thing we did um, was being completely rewrote the internals of AutoMapper oh, really? uh, to, to increase it performance. Faster. So it was like, I think we, it's between 50 and 100 times faster than oh, what wow. it was before. That's um, impressive. And the big thing we, we switched to is um, we had to have a more deliberate configuration and execution steps. Hmm. So before anyone could change configuration at any time, which meant I couldn't optimize the mapping that it would do. Mm. So that was another huge breaking change. I said, you can't just kind of 
configure willy nilly you have to have a explicit configuration step hmm. and we take that in take the configuration and build out a explicit like this is exactly what you configured and so this is the exact mapping algorithm that you need and then compile that and that compiled code is now the thing that runs hmm. so now it runs super fast um the only way you can make it faster is removing features, which I don't really want to do. So yeah, actually, I've talked to guys on language teams. Then they, uh, I didn't really think about this before, but uh, removing anything, removing any features, is a huge deal. Yes, and that's why languages, computer languages, evolve so slowly that you think, why, well, you know, why isn't database access built into C sharp? Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, one of the reasons is because someday it may not be appropriate and they want to take it out and people will scream bloody murder when you remove a feature. Like, like you saw with uh, when you started removing yeah. uh, the ability to, to do formatting. Yeah. You, there had to be some people that were really upset about I use that. I depend on that feature. How dare you? <laughs> and, well, we depend on the feature, too. So yeah. it's even like our yeah. projects we had to decide like that. So now you have to re-architect something because of this change in right. the tool that you rely on. And there, that's a pain point. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, these weren't easy choices, but it, yeah. it, it came down to just trying to keep with the spirit of the library, but then making it as fast as possible. And then anything else that we want to take away could make it faster, but then be like something very fundamental that it does that wouldn't be able to do anymore. So, what, What's the future of Automapper? Is there some uh, big stuff on the horizon or what? Probably the biggest thing I've had people ask a lot is to go backwards. We go from entity to DTO. People want to do the other direction. Oh, okay. Um, it's something that I don't generally do in my projects for most of them, but then I've noticed it started coming up more and more for us. And so supporting that is more difficult than you might think because it's just you're going from a superset to a subset of data, going from the other direction oh, you may to a more to, complex uh, model. You've got missing information that you There's missing to, information to that's more complex, so you're you're going potentially traversing child objects to set things. So it's wow. it's a, a little bit more complicated. So that's the next 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 really big thing we're working on is getting the actually functioning so people will stop complaining about it being a missing <laughs> feature once and for all hopefully uh, where, where do people find automapper you can go to the website which is automapper.org mm -hmm. and of course it's on nuget um you, it's right, on, you can right click and say add package and or manage yeah. NuGet packages and search for automapper you don't really have to search because it's like on the top page there it's ah, like right okay. there <laughs> right. i paid some people in nuget to make sure my really? library no. <laughs> that sounded really i paid them lots of stack overflow points <laughs> yeah. oh, I gotta get that's how it goes yeah <laughs> Uh, I'll stop living in that John Skeet's <laughs> shadow after a while. <laughs> and uh, and you are you have an online presence also. Yeah, you can find me online at uh, jimmybogart.com. And I used to have another blog at another site, which is most of my work. But uh, jimmybogart.com is where I am now. Jimmy, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me, David. Um, before I met technology, I actually had a lot of friends, but not anymore. <laughs>